Joining me now from Manchester is the former president of the European Society for Paediatric Infectious Diseases, Professor Adam Finn. Uh, Professor Finn, good to see you this yeah. afternoon. Um, three little ones have succumbed to this in a week. Uh, are you worried? Well, I, I think this is a, an organism that has been uh, has not really attracted enough attention up until now. It, it's it's surging back along with a lot of other infections as the restrictions of the pandemic uh, come to an end. Uh, but this uh, this particular bug has been causing invasive disease uh, in larger numbers, actually, than meningococcus, which is one that we're all familiar with and with, against which we have vaccines uh, over a period of many years. And we see these bulges of infection from time to time. So it is a bug that we ought to be focusing our attention on more, and I think we should be developing a vaccine to try and prevent it. Now, strep A, uh, very common, tends to present mildly. People might not even know they have it. But it, what these children have died of is the invasive uh, variety of, of that. Um, how does one become the other, and how do we know the difference? Yeah, it's, it's a good question. Uh, this is a very prevalent organism and uh, invasive disease occurs when it gets into the wrong place, essentially, um, and starts to proliferate in, in the tissues or the body where it, bacteria wouldn't normally be. It normally sits in the throat and it can cause trouble causing sore throats, but it doesn't get beyond that. But once it gets into the bloodstream or other parts of the body, it can really uh, run rampant and cause these very, very serious cases. And there are particular strains of it which seem to be more prone and more able to do that, which is why we do see these outbreaks from time to time. Of course, parents, are, are, you know, parents fear the worst, don't they? They naturally worry about this. Um, should children with symptoms of this, even if it looks milder, they should be keeping them at home? Uh, well, I think, uh, as with all infections, parents do need to be the judge here. Um, children get fevers and infections all the time, particularly at this time of year. Uh, but when children begin to be more unwell, as you just heard Adriana saying, uh, the fever is persistent, they develop a rash, they're less responsive, not eating or staying ill for a longer period. That's the time to pick up the phone, uh, get advice or, or take them to the GP or to the local emergency department for further evaluation. These organisms are very sensitive to penicillin antibiotics. Uh, so if the infection is treated early, it can often be brought under control. So a child that's sick and, and not getting better over a period of time, that's the moment to seek further attention. And you uh, talked about so antibiotics, uh, the treatment. You also talked earlier about developing a vaccine. Um, how, how long will that be in coming? Uh, it's not a vaccine that's in the pipeline at the moment. There are early developmental candidates. It's an organism which, in my opinion, has been much ignored over the years. Uh, it doesn't cause meningitis, which is something that has particularly accelerated attention. It does actually cause a lot of uh, morbidity and mortality around the world. It causes heart disease, uh, rheumatic fever, glomerulonephritis, which is a kidney disease, as well as these really bad cases of invasive disease and something called toxic shock syndrome. So there are many diseases this uh, particular bug causes, and it's time we pulled our socks up and, and really looked for a way to prevent it. And what should schools be doing to try and slow down the transmission? Uh, there's nothing much to schools can do to, to slow the transmission uh, at the moment. I mean, of course, that did happen when schools were shut and children were not contacting each other. Uh, but, uh, you know, in normal times, there's nothing much that can be done. Where we see more than one case occurring of invasive disease in a school or an institution, then that's counted as an outbreak. And uh, we do an investigation and often give antibiotics to contacts. But in the case of uh, a single case like this, the investigations are usually uh, restricted to very close home contacts that may be ill, uh, and we don't otherwise uh, change behavior or intervene with antibiotics.